Great. Welcome. Um, I, ha I had a little bit of a challenge earlier, so do me a favor by sharing so that other people can also join and benefit from the ideas we are going to share. My name is Frederick. Um, if this is your first time um, on the Fred Effect Twitter handle, you're welcome. Um, I make videos on studying abroad and scholarship opportunities. I've had opportunity to go through um, the study abroad process, um, having attended two different universities and with a full scholarship. I have also had the opportunity to assist over thousands of people. My channel at the moment is the biggest study abroad content creation channel. So um, we have over 130,000 on YouTube. So if you've not subscribed, we share a lot of ideas there. Please um, subscribe. Um, on Twitter, it's also the Fred Effect or X, um, TikTok, Instagram, and also um, other social media platforms as well. So um, from time to time, I organize spaces like this, especially on weekends, I do a live session to respond to most of the questions you may have about the entire study abroad journey. Once you're going through it and then you, you get assistance from people who have already done it, it makes life a bit easier. So um, I am not pretending to be an expert, but um, I have gathered a lot of knowledge about the entire study abroad process, going through the visa processes myself and um, helping others to go through. I share ideas and information on how you can be successful with the process. So we are currently live on YouTube, we are live on Facebook, and then we're also live on Twitter or X, and then um, we are live on Instagram as well. So if you want to ask a question, you just have to request. I'll be happy to approve it and you can ask your questions. So um, when you request, you have an opportunity to ask two questions. And if you have more, no problem, just request and I'll be happy to approve it. So do me a favor by sharing the space. I did not schedule this. This is unplanned. So do me a favor by sharing so that other people can also join in and benefit from the information and ideas we are sharing today. Um, my brother, um, Peregrino, just joining. Um, thank you, bro, for, for joining. So you can put in the request and ask your questions if you have any. At the moment, my team, um, we are the only people that are, um, assist um, individuals with high school and diploma qualifications who want to apply for a bachelor's degree for free. Um, if you have a diploma or high school qualification, you just have to schedule a 30 minutes conversation with my team and then we'll take your document. Most of the universities we target in the United States do not require an application fee. So that's the reason why we wouldn't charge you anything to work on your application for you. Okay, so let's see. Um, I believe if you can unmute yourself, you can go ahead with your question, sir. Hello, good evening, Mr. Fred. Hello? Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, go ahead. I can hear you. Please, I want to ask. Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Um, I, I've done my worst evaluation last year while I was applying. I was a bit naive last year, so I did all the application thing myself. So I got an admission, but I was denied uh, at the embassy because my admission didn't come with full funding. It was just a uh, partial tuition waiver. So later I came by your platform online, started following you and your guidance. And I saw your post that we should come and meet your team that you help us and stuff like that. So I, I'm kind of wondering if I subscribe to to your um coming to your team, is it like you guide me through or you help me secure the admission thing? Let's talk about what qualifications do you have, bro? I have H and D, H and D, I understand that more. All right, so let's. Um, it's good that you gave it a shot, um, but let 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 us not make it look as if um, you were refused based on um, you not having funded. I mean, a lot of people with full funding are unable to secure the visa. The visa process is, you know, a whole different thing, and so it depends on the preparation and stuff like that that you put in. So it's, it it could be the funding. It could also be another thing. So you have a three year. Um, um, do you have a two year HND or a three year HND? I'm from Nigeria, two years MD, two years HMD. Oh, okay, that means that you 
are interested in a master's degree, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So with a master's degree, my team has um, a mentorship program where we get to meet 30 minutes every week until your visa is approved. So that is um, another thing in terms, but if you want to use maybe your diploma to apply for another bachelor's degree, that is where we take your document and secure a bachelor's degree application for you. So with okay. you who want um, a master's degree application, there is an option for the mentorship program where we guide you through the process. Oh, okay, sir. Oh, I think I'm, I'm okay with either of the two. I just want funding. Okay, so we can definitely schedule a meeting and then um, we can take it from there, bro. All right, let's talk to um, another person, Michael. Michael, can you please hear me? Yeah, th thank you, Fred, for the opportunity. Yeah, uh, so I'm planning, yeah, I'm planning of uh, doing my West evaluation. Um, I'm currently, uh, I have my undergrad uh, transcript. But uh, I'm yet to finish my MPhil. So in in evaluating, do I have to add my MPhil? Do I, of which I've I've defend submitted my thesis and then also defended it. And then also I want to find out can can, can a cousin be a sponsor? Can I please answer okay. the first question and come over? Okay. So the first question was about evaluation. Do you have like um, a four year street bachelor's degree? Yes, I have a four year street bachelor's degree. Okay, so you may or may not need the evaluation depending on um, which university you're applying to. So if the university requires um, compulsory evaluation like maybe Ball State University, then of course you do the evaluation. But if your universe, um, the university you're applying to do not require it, then um, the evaluation may not be important. And then when you are evaluating, um, depending on whether you want a PhD or a, um, another master's degree, you de that, that will determine the, the transcript you are going to evaluate. So if you want to apply for another master's degree, obviously it will be required that you evaluate them. Um, that is, if the school requires the evaluation and you are willing to do that, then you evaluate um, the bachelor's degree transcript. Okay, so yes, the school is requiring that I, I evaluate my bachelor's degree. But since I I, I have a master's, do I'm 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 I haven't completed. I was thinking of maybe adding it to it for both of them to evaluate it. Yeah, of course it will come at an extra cost. Do you um are you applying for a second master's or a PhD? Yes, yeah, second second master's. Yeah, then I I would I would um suggest that you evaluate the only the bachelor's degree. And obviously when you're applying, you could have an opportunity to let them know that you have an incomplete um, transcript for a master's degree. Of course, that will give you an upper hand because almost everybody who will be applying to the same school will be using a bachelor's degree. So if you have a master's and applying for a second master's, it gives you an upper hand over them. So you just have to let them know that you do have the master's unless it is in the same field that you are applying for the second master's. But if it's another, another field like myself, I had a bachelor's degree, I had a master's degree, and I wanted to apply for a second master's degree. Now, because it was in a different field, I attached my master's degree to the application. That gave me an upper hand over anybody applying only with a bachelor's degree. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I guess. But, but if it's in the and same it, field that you had your previous master's and want to go for a second master's, then you, they, you may be questioning about why you have the same qualification and want to apply for another one. Okay. And then and secondly, please, can a, a cousin be a sponsor? That's a good question. So in terms of sponsorship, um, of course, um, ideally I would, um, you know, um, recommend that you go in for a full scholarship so that you don't necessarily need a sponsor and all that. But of course, if you there is a need for a sponsor, the sponsorship will be determined by the school. So every school has what we call financial support form or financial affidavit or, um, um, you know, support letter. Um, it depends on the name of the school. That, the, the, that financial affidavit form, which you complete to attach your financial document, actually dictates what, who can be a sponsor and who cannot. So a typical example, a school like East Tennessee State University in Johnson City, um, 
they don't require, um, your bank statement should not be a company statement. They would reject that. A school like University of Alabama at Tuscaloosa, they, they only want either yourself or your direct parent to be your sponsor. So my point is that your, um, who, who or who cannot be your sponsor is being dictated by the, the kind of school you gain admission into. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, it's, it's, it's clear. It's making sense. Okay. Let's talk to Ransford. Um, Ransford, how are you doing? Please, glad I said I'm fine. Please, how about you? I'm okay. Thank um, you for asking. It, it, there, there's a bit of echo at the background, but we can manage this. Go ahead, sir. All right. I'm from Ghana, UCC. Hello, Brian. Can you go ahead? We can hear you. Um, from Ghana, UCC. I'm currently in level 400, my final year. Um, I was I used to watch your video, so I contacted uh, some of the lecturers from Maryland University. That's Show. I don't know if I got the name for it. Yeah, please go ahead. And then um, he gave me go ahead to, I mean, applied. I um, sent a message through email and he, go, he gave me the go ahead. So I don't know, I've not completed yet. So I don't know what to actually do because I don't have my transcripts and a lot. I don't have some of this. So I don't know how to communicate to him again. Well, I was trying, I, like I was trying, like if how to communicate with them, if they will give me a response or not. All right. So the good thing is that even um, when you're in the final year, even without completing, and you have at least three semesters of transcript, you can use that to apply. Now, the whole idea is that the entire process is going to take approximately six to a year. And by then, you might have graduated and gotten the the final semester's um, transcripts in addition to the one you used to apply. So what it means is that when you're coming to the school, you need to show the entire um, transcript. So you can apply, especially if you're able to lay hands on, you know, the other required documents, like would you be able to get a recommendation letter? Would you be able to get an English proficiency letter without completing? So if you're able to lay hands on these documents, of course, you can go ahead and apply. Oh, okay. All right. All right, Fred. Um, believe, kindly be patient with me. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. Now, you can go ahead, believe. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I, I wanted to ask about the financial support. I mean, um, if you have a relative outside and the person is willing to support you financially, I learned he or she could, I mean, uh, write, I don't know, financial affidavit or something. Uh -huh. But then I was thinking of, I watched a certain video um one of your interviews with uh, a visa a view like former view i mean uh he, he was saying that when you have such i mean a uh, such thing a relative willing to support you financially and you take that to the embassy for your visa the view thinks that you have like you, you there's a high probability to stay over there after education i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say I, i'm trying but i want to know exactly what your question is bro yes so i, I want to understand if it's advisable to use that particular if a, a family member is outside and would want to support you financially is it advisable to use it or you, you shouldn't go by that process Okay, so, so that's a good question. So yes, um, when you say outside, um, it's it's a bit big. Yeah, do you mean? No, like, I mean uh, the states. Uh, any of the states. Right. So what, what I'm um, based on experience, you know, um, who or who cannot sponsor you is being dictated by the school and not the embassy. So the embassy has a lot of um, instructions and requirements. So for example, the picture that you upload when applying for for. Oh, or your DS-160 um, should not be older than three months. You know, um, there are strict instructions on certain things. There is no instruction 
on financial statement. Now you are taking a fine, and, and in fact, about 70% of people who go to the embassy, they don't even check their bank statement. Personally, my, my statement was not checked. So the point is that the school um, in which you gained admission into, depending on the type of scholarship you, you got, would require the financial statement. Now they have the instructions on, um, just like I explained to a brother earlier, they have instructions on how the financial statement should be. However, because you submitted um, a bank statement to your school, when you're going to the embassy, it is recommended that you take that bank statement along just in case you are being asked about sponsorship issues and all that. Great. Now, uh, there are a lot of people who have family members here and yet they got a visa approved. In fact, there are people who have family members who have filed an immigrant petition on their behalf, yet they get the non-immigrant visa approved. Now, it depends on how you are able to explain that even though um, my sponsor is in the United States, I am, um, I am genuinely coming as a student and will not be an immigrant. Now, another thing is that when you have somebody from the same country, you know, sponsoring you, you might want to find out, you know, a lot of information about the person. Is the person even on a good record in the first place? So if the person is not on a good record, remember that whatever, you know, situation the person finds himself in may affect your approval or um, your denial. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yep. So if you, you find it difficult to even answer the question of what job the person is doing, or maybe which state, which city, what is the zip code of the person, that, mean, that means genuinely the person is not your sponsor. So, you know, um, there are a lot of questions you can answer about those, um, you know, those things, but understand that a lot of people who have bank statement or financial support from home may get their visa denied, but people who have sponsors in the U.S. may have it approved. It, it doesn't matter whether your sponsor is from the U.S. or not. It depends on how you're able to um, articulate yourself during the interview. Oh, okay. Well, let's do it. Room for third. All right, let's talk to Christian. Christian, go ahead. Uh, uh, hello, good evening once again. Okay, just give me a minute, Christian. Um, so if you're watching us, um, welcome to the, the Fred Effect Twitter space. This is Study Abroad, um, question and answers with the Fred Effect. I, my name is Fred. I make videos on studying abroad and share ideas on how you can go about the entire process. I have gone through, I've had opportunity to assist thousands of people to go through and I continue to do that on a daily basis. Um, I have two master's degrees from the US and my, my channel is the biggest study about content creation channel. So we are live on Facebook. If you're watching us on Facebook, do us a favor and follow the Facebook handle and also share. You can join us live if you check out the Fred Effect Twitter handle, and then you can also ask your questions. Go ahead, bro. Uh, uh, hello, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fred. Uh, please, I want to find out uh, uh, on merit scholarship. Yeah, I applied for a school, and then I have a merit scholarship, that is the University of Bridgeport. And then I think uh, upon further consultation with uh, some experts, from the school that said mm. the mirror scholarship covers the two mm. semesters of your very the very first two semesters in the first year so i don't know how more we can dive deeper into it for me all right congrats on the admission so um i'm i'm, I'm sure it's a master's degree admission yeah hello it's a master's degree yeah, sure. If it's a master's degree, obviously, you should reach out to the head of the department and express gratitude for being considered for the admission and ask if, you know, there will be any other scholarship to, to apply to that mm -hmm. you have. Yeah. Up, yeah. Hello. Uh, Christian, it's a conversation. If you could let me land, then you could come in. You, you can unmute yourself and go ahead. Christian, please unmute yourself. Go ahead. Uh, hello, please. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I I missed the 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 the, the admission officer, and then he told me for now for my program that was the 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 available scholarship they give to students coming to that department, and then 
one other school that is uh, New Mexico Highland. That one we did an advert on it and then I applied and then I also got admission. But the problem now is the funding aspect. So I don't know. It's, if... it's not a problem. So if you had made me land, you would have understood what I was about to explain. So New Mexico okay. Highlands, for example, the same way, if you reach out to the head of the party, sometimes not every admission automatically comes with um, the scholarship. You may have to submit a separate application and sometimes even attend um, an interview with the admissions team and all that. So once you get admission, perfect. Reach out to the HOD, ask if you have to submit a separate application to be considered for scholarship or you would automatically be considered. Now, if you would automatically be considered, they will tell you when the awards will be given, maybe in May, maybe in June. On the other hand, every university has, an, it has a financial aid office. So when you go to the school's website, just check out the financial aid office and you can reach out to them as well. Another one is the international office. The international office is, is responsible for all international students. They issue I-20, help you work on your visa processes and all that. You can reach out to them. Sometimes they can employ you or um, let you know some of the scholarships available for international students in the school. The next one, you can reach out to the graduate office. Just like, you know, they have the undergraduate office. They also have graduate office. They can employ you or also let you know some of the graduate um, scholarships you can apply for. Now, the next one is that um, every university has an employment website. So on the employment website, that is where they advertise almost every job in the school, including faculty positions and all that. So there are some non-academic um, departments in the school that has graduate assistantship. So for a typical example is that in my first school, my department automatically gave me the scholarship, so I didn't have to submit a separate application. However, on, in my second school, my scholarship did not come from my department. It came from a non-academic department in the school. I was working for the transportation center in the school as a research assistant. I have to go to the employment website of the university and apply, and then I got that assistance. So whilst I was schooling at the public administration department, I was working as a research assistant for the transportation center, which uh, paid my school fees and paid me stipends as well. So the good thing is that, congrats, you have admission. There's a lot of avenues to explore in order to get scholarship. The scholarship may not necessarily have to come automatically with a scholarship, uh, with the admission. All right, let's talk to another person. Um, Nathaniel, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, Fred, I, I believe um, my question um, is um, I am Nathaniel, please. Is it me? Um, okay, so let, let's speak to the first. There's two we have two Nathaniels here. Okay, so. Okay, okay. Nathaniel Brown, you can unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the space. Uh, last year, I had an admission to University of Alabama. I went for the interview and I was denied because I took a loan from Empire. And this let's, year, I've... let's make the corrections. You were not denied because you took a loan from Empire. You were refused. Let's go ahead. Don't don't give an, a reason because the documents you were given, which is the two one four B document, gave a lot of reasons, a possible reasons for the denial. It didn't specifically state that. You took a loan from Empower. Yes, um, a, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Massachusetts. Um, there is a university there that I had. I met a brother. He's also a Ghanaian. He came on Empower. So don't see that he took Empower. That's why you were denied. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. But then when I mentioned Empower, he just uh, took the paper. So I, probably that was why I think that that was the case. But thanks for the correction, though. And um, I've gotten the same admission for the uh, coming year for. I've emailed the school directors, as you normally tell us to do. I've done all those things. But then most of the feedback I normally get is that we don't have funding for my course, which is a master's in computer science. I, I seriously don't know. Now I've 
even book the interview on the 22nd of February. But then I don't even know how to go and get my I-20 and go about the interview. Um, seriously, I don't know what to do. So I seriously need your help, if you can help on that okay. regard. So congrats on the admission. Um, I have a, I have the opportunity to help a lot of people to University of Alabama. I even made a video when they they waived the application fee and all that. So I am um, just like I explained to a brother. Ideally, the, your department is supposed to give you the assistantship, but that's that that's not it. There's a lot of other alternatives you can explore. So if your department does not have the assistantship. You can get that, especially with computer science, it's well sought after. So you can easily get an assistantship in other departments. Now, the good thing is that University of Alabama is a huge school. So you can even get an assistantship in a different department, just like how mine worked, right? So one, try and get in touch with other Ghanaians. And I have a lot of people in University of Alabama. Get in touch with them. Two, email the um, financial aid office. Three, check out the employment website of University of Alabama. Now, let me give you the step. When you want to apply assistantship in another department, or even if it's a non-academic department, like my case, the transportation center was a non-academic department. When you see such a job, you can email them and let them know what you are bringing on board. You can um, copy the director of your program, um, or if you have an advisor in the email, so even if they will not respond to you, they will definitely respond because of the professor you copied in the email. So if you if you want to get a financial statement and get your I-20 and book for an interview, that is perfect. Your service fee was paid so that it doesn't go waste. Then you keep on searching for um the the assistantship or the, the scholarship. And of course, there are other universities that are still open for admission. Today, I shared a lot of universities that are waiving application fees. So you don't want to put your eggs in one basket. So you can check out other schools that may, you may want to apply to for the same fall semester. And if you get a better offer over there, you can definitely switch without necessarily have to, having to depend on only one school. All right, let's talk to another person. Um, welcome if you're, you're just joining us. This is an impromptu space. So we are live on YouTube on the Freddy Fact YouTube channel. Um, we are live on Facebook on the Freddy Facts Facebook page. We are live on Twitter X, and then we're also live on Instagram. So do um do me a favor and subscribe. I am always live on on Sundays um at seventeen thirty um thirty GMT. So um this Sunday I was live, and then on next Sunday I'll be talking to a brother who is currently studying in Canada to share ideas on how you can go about your Canada. Um, Canada study abroad process. So you can join us this um, this and every Sunday to get expect, um, advice and you know information on how to go about your process. You you shouldn't be um, you, you shouldn't be sort of um, discouraged when things are not going as expected. The whole process it's super easy. It depends on how you go about it. Finances shouldn't be a problem. Your CGPA shouldn't be a problem. Myself, I didn't have the resources to sit for GRE or GMAT, yet I was able to secure a full scholarship to get here. So the point is that you can do it. Um, it's um, my I, I did my national service in Bali, Bombay. It was with the same 559 that I used to work on the application. And during my time, I was able to apply to only one school. Not that I wanted to apply to only one school. I didn't know that there are some schools that I could simply ask and get an application fee waiver. So Ohio University, that was just in the school I applied to. And I was only able to afford the $50 application fee by then. And when I emailed the director, he told me um, he would give me funding. So that was the only school I applied to. And by God's grace, I was able to sail through. Now, there's a lot of information out there. My brother, um, Peregrino, um, there, there are people like... Um, um, Peter Belwa, who is sharing, um, I am Cosmos, um, you know, Nana, Nana Bafo TV, um, Choco Milonier. There are a lot of kings for the Nina. There are a lot of people sharing information out there that you can actually follow and work on this process. And by God's grace, you'll be successful.
All right, let's see if we can respond to more questions. Let's talk to Harold. Harold Darko, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay. Uh, Fred, please, thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, my question to you, 2019, I had a school in Houston. And uh, I went through what we call the service fee. I did everything. And uh, I went to the embassy, but unfortunately, I didn't get the um, visa. So um, this year, I decided to pursue again. Uh, I tried a couple of schools, and I've actually started with what we call the words uh, evaluation. But I, I wanted Um, I don't know if we lost a brother. Um, okay, Harold, can you please hear me? Harold, can you hear me? Okay, I think we lost um, Harold. Harold, can you please hear me? Harold, can you hear me? Okay, uh, let's see. I think we lost Harold. Um, let's talk to Mr. President. Mr. President, please unmute yourself. Which country are you a president of? Hi, Mr. President. Okay, Mr. President, you're muted. So if you can unmute yourself, then you can talk. Okay, let's talk to Tickles. Tickles, how are you doing? Um, good evening, Fred. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think on Sunday I joined you, and then I told you uh, my service fee was going to expire and then my interview date was on August. So you asked me to have, uh, apply for an emergency. So I did. And then um, I later got an email from the uh, 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 embassy that I have to send my I-20. So I quickly sent an email to the school requesting for an expedited I-20 to be sent to me. But I have sent the I-20 as directed by the uh, embassy. And this morning I received an email that um, the embassy, okay, let me try and read the email actually. It says, greetings. The embassy does not assist with interview scheduling. However, our support team is happy to help. And you may contact them at, give me some hotline, helpline. I tried calling, it, it wasn't working, and some emails. So I'm actually confused on how to go about it because the 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 email that initially came said I should send I should send my I20 to that this email and this email is replying me that it does not assist with interview scheduling. So I don't know if okay. you can assist with that. Yeah, sure. So um, I I I would be happy if I uh, to see the email you sent. You know. So when you, you were requesting for the emergency, initially you were supposed to attach the I-20. Now, well, if you got the email um, of sending your, your I-20 to the embassy, then you should have taken your time to explain when you requested for emergency, the email you got from the embassy asking you to send your I-20. But if you just send your I-20 without um, taking your time to explain, um, you know, the the previous conversations that has happened then they may the person who reads it may not even understand that you have requested for emergency and the embassy has actually because you don't expect that the same person who sent you the email will be responding to the new one that you sent so you can take your time and explain um, and give precedence to what has actually happened. You requested for emergency on this date. You received a, a, a correspondence, an email correspondent on this date from this email saying that you should do this, this, and that. And this is the email attached. Then the person reading may understand why um, you are sending such an email, and then they will definitely give you feedback. Obviously, in the appointment portal, there is something we call the provide feedback section. So you can also use the provide feedback section to reach them if you know um, this one does not work. Okay, let's talk to another person. Let's talk to um, uh, Davis. Davis, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Hello, good evening, Mr. Fred. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm fine with you. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Okay. Please go ahead. Please, I have an HND and I'm looking forward to scheduling a meeting with your team to apply for an 
Like, like you know, whether it's true that getting admission true. Hello. 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 Please can you hear me? Hello, Mister. Hello. Okay, so Hello. um, could you yeah, can you please take your time? I'm listening to Davis now. When I'm done, I'll come to you. All right. All right, Davis, please go ahead. Okay. So when I'm looking forward to schedule a meeting with your team, and I have an H and D, so I wanted to know if I am to get an ad admission, would I be starting a fresh or or just do something like a top up? So, do you have a three-year HND or a two-year HND? Three-year HND. Okay, so if it's if it's a, a three-year HND, then of course you can either opt for um, a top-up or a transfer, which means that you're starting from um, a senior year, or what we call level three hundred. But if you want to um, apply for a master's degree, that is also feasible with your three-year HND. Um, then yeah, that is also. Um, one thing you can consider, and and also um, the document you requested we get we prepare before meeting your team. I have all but the recommendation letters. Um, I just wanted to know. I don't have them. I just wanted to know if I can meet your team with the available ones that I have now. No, I mean the recommendation letters are required if you want to study. Um, if you want to um, study abroad, so. Please get the recommendation letters. It will be needed in in the application process. So that that's also very important. Okay, and that... uh, uh, Davis, unfortunately, I'm taking two questions per person to allow everybody equal opportunity. Um, Cooks, Kukua, Gloria, you can kindly unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay. Hello. Good evening. Um, so I checked a lot of schools, but scholarship for um like master's in business analytics or project management. I have an HND in secretaryship and management studies. Okay, so you said um, scholarships for business analytics, is that what you asked? Yes. Yeah, so you, you said you checked a lot of schools. Um, can you complete that statement? The, I mean, um, with the HND, if there are scholarships for um I, I couldn't find a lot of scholarships for for masters um in the business analytics or project management all right so the truth uh, and the truth here is that if to be able to get um, a full scholarship for a business related program there are two tricks to use one is either you write um gre or gmat the second one is you can um apply for a dual master's degree program. So if you check a university like University of Utah, they have a dual master's program in business related. For, so you can combine maybe business analytics with an MBA, you know, and then that will give you a good scholarship. So, but before you do that, it, it's important that you share your transcript with the director of the program as well as your CV and you ask if you'll be considered for admission and of course if you'll be considered for the scholarship. Now when they give you a positive feedback then you can go ahead and apply. Now another thing you can do is that you can decide to opt for a related field which will make the admission, scholarship and visa process easier for you. Then when you get into the system you can decide to switch to a field that you love. You know, So basically that, that is something you can consider. Okay, thank you. All right, and and just to just just to wrap it up, yesterday um, on my live session, I shared a couple of schools that have free applications for I think seventy five dollar mm -hmm. being with for a master of business analytics program. So I don't know if you checked that live, but I shared it there. You can check that live session. It's on my YouTube channel and also on Facebook as well. All right, let's talk to another person. Um, let's talk to Nyama. Nyama, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Are you, from, Fred, are you, you. like a footballer? Not really, not really, but I'm a fan of football. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so I'd like to know whether it's, it's true. There's a popular idea going around that um, if you have been accepted into 
um, a college education, especially if you already have a BAC, is very, it's almost high, highly impossible to to get a visa approved. I don't know how so or how true that statement is. Right. So the question will then be: Would you be the first person to have such um, you know, qualifications and yet apply to a bachelor's degree qualification? No. Would you be the last person? No. Are there people studying who had the same qualification and yet got the visa? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Let's talk to um Boatin Bernard, BB. Yeah, hello, boss. Good evening. Go ahead, sir. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm fine. Very great support. Are you sleeping or what? What was the time? What what where are you at and what's the time? I'm Ghana. And it's eleven here. Oh, okay. This is like an ungodly yeah. hour for us to have a Twitter space, right? <laughs> yeah. No problem. It's like six fifteen um at my end here. So oh, okay. Yeah. Um I want to know more on uh, exploring uh, funding including scholarship for undergrad um, programs. Because um, last year, I, I, I got an engagement into a university in Oxford, Ohio, and was able to secure a $10,000 scholarship, $10,000 scholarship. But um, the difference was uh, a bit huge. So I wasn't able to carry on to the end of the process. And I would like to know, well, uh, how many options are there um, in, in the terms of funding for undergraduate programs, specifically um, political science related or public administration? Thank you. Great. So um, with undergrad, the, the best way is to be able to um, apply to a college or a university that gives you the opportunity to apply for what we call the CSS profile. So the, um, the CSS profile is sort of um, um, gives, you know, the university an idea of your current financial status or your sponsors or your dependents. Um, 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 the people that you are going to sponsor you, like your parents, their financial circumstances, that would warrant if you qualify for additional scholarships. So I did a university um, um, one one college for um, a lady, she's currently here, and then she got 16,000 automatic scholarship. And then after we completed the CSS profile, she got additional $25,000 of scholarship. So not every college is being supported by the CSS profile, but a lot of colleges are. And so that is one. The next thing is that mostly if you're able to sit for SAT or the ACT, that, that is the SAT or the ACT exams, and you have a good score, added to you know um, your high school or your diploma qualification it gives you an opportunity to have a full scholarship obviously after the admission you should have reached out to um, Miami University I'm sure that's the university you're gonna because you said us for Ohio most, most definitely yeah yeah I lived in Ohio for like three years so I know most of the schools there so um you know you should have reached out to the school and ask if there are other international scholarship or maybe some presidential scholarship that can be added to the automatic scholarship you got. I mean, you applied for free, you got that scholarship. If you had spoken to me earlier, I would have still recommended that you get a financial statement and then push through um, with the processes. All right, let's talk to another person. So, um, hi everyone, we are live on YouTube, we are live on Facebook. Um, if you are joining us, this is the Fred Effect. The, um, currently the biggest study abroad content creation platform um, as an African, I have opportunity to go through the study abroad process. I actually um, completed my high school in Sunyane, Sunyane Senior High School. I moved on to University of Cape Coast. Um, and then from University of Cape Coast, I had opportunity to be at Ohio University for my first master's. I moved on for my second master's. So going through the process, I realized that um, you know, there are a lot of information that if we're able to put out there could change a lot of lives and would make the whole um, process easier for a lot of people. So I created a study abroad um, content creation channel, which is called the Fred Effect. Um, this name was given by one of the people. He's currently at University of Texas at El Paso. So he actually coined this name because of the assistance that I was giving to a lot of people. Um, 
So thank you for joining in. Please subscribe to the Fed Effect YouTube channel. Follow on Facebook as well and be part of the family. So let's let's answer a couple of questions and then um, move on. Nathaniel, um, Senor, if you can yeah. unmute yourself. Okay, so Fred, good evening. Um, um, I applied for um, University South, um, the University of Southern California. And um, first, I sent, um, listening to you, I sent them an email that if I warrant, um, I send my um, transcript and everything. And they gave me, um, the director of the program, uh, now, program now, can gave you, me. Can you please um, restart your question? I missed you at some point. Okay, so I said I applied to the Southern California University. And then um, I've, before I started my application, I emailed the director of the program and then doing my master's degree. So I asked, um, I inquired if I would be admitted with my GP and everything. And he was like, okay, yes, I can go ahead and then apply because when I apply, it comes with um, automatic scholarship. He gave me, she gave me a certain time frame. Now, my question is, I've applied and paid the, um, the application fee and everything but i came to know that it is a private school so my first question is with the private school is it likely to get a full scholarship or you get a part scholarship then the second question i have for you is um i also subscribe to your meeting for the graduate speed, um applicant my other question is would um your team take a full control over it in terms of application, or I will just be assisted with um, other staff to make the application possible. Right. So the first one is yeah, obviously private universities could offer a full scholarship. Um, so there's a university called Marquette University. It's it's a private university, but most of the people I know about they are on a full scholarship. So once you you said you spoke to the head of department, and he uh, he or she assured you of um you know scholarship then you don't have a, a problem at all when you gain the admission you just have to keep in touch with them now um there are a lot of packages under what the fred effect team offers so if you actually sign up for a 30 minute conversation is going to be assistant within 30 minutes we actually do 15 and then we we'll reschedule for another 15. it depends on what, what package you opt for there's also the um mentorship program where we get to meet 30 minutes every week to help you through the process until your visa is approved so depending on whichever one you opt for then yeah okay okay all right so let's speak to another Thank person you. um so you can also put in the request if you are listening to um if you're watching us live on facebook and the way to join us is to be able to type your questions in the chat and i'll be happy to respond to them um Let's see if we can get some questions um, from Facebook. Okay, so on YouTube, um, Delali, you said, hello, Fred, I need um, that you can self-report your evaluated transcript from, okay, um, your question is incomplete. I don't know what you're trying to say, if you can retype again, Delali. So on Facebook, um, Felix Boatin says, um, Fred, please, can I get a scholarship um, from a community college? Yes, Felix, some community colleges would offer you a scholarship. If you check on my YouTube channel, I made um, a YouTube video about community colleges that are currently, um, re that requires no application fee. And of course, some of them will give you a scholarship as well. Um, so, um, Ola Tunji, you said, please, what do I do when my date of birth or my certificate is different from the one on my passport and I want to apply for MSc in the US? The date of birth on your certificate um, is when you say, so, is it a birth certificate or your your certificate from the university? Um, Ola Tunji, if you're able to make that clear, then I'll be able to give a good answer to that. So, um, Wayne, you said you're watching live um, from Ghana. So you said, Fred, um, please, I'm a high school graduate and I'm looking forward um, to gain full scholarship to study either um, in the USA or Canada without SAT scores. Please, is it possible for me to gain full scholarship without SAT scores? Yes, it is highly possible to do that.
All right, so um, let's see if we can pick another question from some Oral Kufrim Paul. Um, can you please unmute yourself and go ahead? Hello, good evening. Um, please go ahead. Okay, um, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration, and I'm thinking of writing GRE to support my application. And I want to ask if, um, I'm thinking of writing it somewhere in April. I want to ask if there will be schools that I can catch up for the fall 2024 admission. And if possible, can you recommend some for me? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, in terms of fall semester, I would advise, especially with the business related programs, I would advise that you can even start your application, right? And later on, um, you know, you can add the GRE scores. So most of the um, application deadlines are fast approaching. Um, so it will be good if you can um, start applying. Remember, you can even get admission without the GRE. So you can start applying and later on um, submit the GRE scores. Um, what, what is your background? Um, I read business administration management option. Okay, so I, I, I can recommend a couple of schools. My, my current school, um, which is University of Kentucky, they are waiving a $75 application fee. I think I shared that in my live yesterday. Um, so they have a couple of um, business related programs. So when you apply, there's an, um, an email address to reach out to, and then they, they would waive their application fee for you. So you can check out my school. And then Cleveland State University, I think they have a $40 application fee which is also being waived so you can give that a shot as well all right let's talk to another person um hello can you hear me i i uh, um bro i just answered your question is it a real from paul or oh. yeah yeah okay great all right let's talk to um mr um mr I, uh, what, what's your name can you please pronounce hello. your name so good evening. yeah how are you um, doing i'm doing good my name is muta is alive <laughs> Muta is alive, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's my social media handle. Um, okay, so um I was refused at the embassy thrice from last four semester and then spring. So this time around I applied to other schools for undergraduates and I had admission to Wabash College, yeah, with presidential scholarship of 43,000 and then they are yet to add another 2,000 for me as well. Yeah, so um, earlier you were mentioning about some um, ways of getting additional funding from the school, which is like how you had your experience with the transport system where you had your stipends. So um, today I had a meeting with my admission counselor and I was also asking for ways to secure more funding. And then he was like, what you just was like I can try maybe some religious groups or other organizations on campus. So I would like to ask um, what are um, the kind of organizations or the kind of um, offices I can contact for these kind of scholarships? Because my admission counselor didn't give me any list or anything, but he just asked me to do a research on that. Oh, okay. So um, what's the name of the university? Wabash College. Okay, so you can definitely check out, um, you know, the organization's page. So every um, university website, you could see the various organizations on campus. So you can check out the website and then you would be able to know some of them and they would have contact details that you can reach out to. So if you're able to do that, um, obviously you can get some of them and it, it wouldn't hurt if you respond to the email of the admissions counselor and then you ask him, you know, what are some of these, you know, um, you know, organizations that, you know, he would recommend you reach out to. Okay. All right. Yes. Let's talk to Imanol Amwa. Imanol Amwa, how are you doing? Yes, I'm, I'm doing good, sir. You... Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you for asking, bro. Okay. Um... I've been following you for quite a number of uh, years now, almost about two, three years. And um, I'm a graduate, though, and I've applied. Now, right, right now, in fact, I'm enrolled in 
MPhil in management studies. And I want to know um, if there is any opportunity as far as business is concerned, or better still, uh, if I should get admission to any of the colleges to, you know, um, what do you call it, um, enjoy some scholarship outside, uh, I'll be grateful. Yeah, so what qualifications do you have and, and what country are you aiming at? Uh, US, of course, and then um, I have BSc in business administration. Yeah, with a BSc in business administration, normally, um, let's start with um, the documents required to be able to work on the application. Um, you should be okay. able to put these documents together. What documents have you been able to put together so far? Right now, I have my transcript with me. I have my CV with me. I have my statement, statement of purpose um, and then my certificate so far. And then also proficiency. Proficiency letter is also with me. Okay, so you need three letters of recommendation as well. So the point is that you should be able to uh, put together all these documents. The second thing is um, you don't necessarily have to limit yourself to only the business-related fields. Um, you can okay. at least have five different programs you are targeting. You would have a first choice, a second choice, and you know three backup plans, and then you would reach out to the head of department of any of these universities. And if you check on my YouTube channel, every single video, I mention a lot of universities you can check out. So when you draft an email and send it to the HOD, so the whole process is not like a try and error kind of thing. You need to talk to somebody in the school. So when you share a copy of your transcript and your resume, um, you know, they'll be able to tell you whether you want, you can go ahead and apply. And two, when you apply, are there scholarships available for you? With your qualification, you know, a bachelor's degree, that's what all of us came here with. So it's highly possible for you to do that, bro. All right. So, guys, um, let me pick um, some questions from the other social media platforms. So, um, Mr. Um, Woodsika, you're watching on YouTube. You said, please, how do I go through all this application system just stranded? You shouldn't be stranded. Um. Mr. Usika, if I got the name right, if I'm wrong, um, kindly forgive me. So you have to start with gathering your document. I just explained to a brother. When you're able to gather your document, you can search for schools related to the field you want to study, either for a bachelor's degree or for a master's degree. And there are lots of schools. You can even go to, according to state. You can check out Canadian universities as well. Um, Let's, um, Mr. Isaac Fenny, you said, uh, Mr. Fred, can we know the universities that are public ones and the ones that are for private? Oh, and, and when you Google any school, so for example, if you Google Cle Cleveland State University, Google will let you know whether it is a public funded or it's a private university. And mostly for undergrad, I would highly recommend you target um, private universities or colleges, but for master's degree, target um, public funded universities. Um, Bafote, you said, hi, Mr. Fred, you're watching on Facebook. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, you said, um, hi, Fred, my bro got admission to study in Anna Maria College. Okay, um, I think for a few months, I took a picture at Anna Maria College. I went there, I went to the campus. It's a beautiful campus. And Colorado University was granted partial scholarship. We started the process with Anna Maria School, but got stuck in the middle of the process. So when you say got stuck, Bafoche, what exactly um, were you stuck with? Is it a visa process? Is it service fee? What were you stuck with? And um, Gideon Mesa said, thank you for the service, man. Thank you for, um, um, you know, supporting Gideon. So Maun, your question said, hi, Fred, do you have a video on how to write compelling statement of research interest? Yeah, I do have um, a couple of videos on my channel like that. All right, so let's let's come back to Twitter space and talk to some other people. So if you can put in the request, I'll approve it. In Kunku, uh, in Kunku's pilot. I don't know if I can... did I get your name right. Well, that's not actually my name, but we we'll, we'll take it like that. <laughs> yeah, let's take it like that and move on. What's up? Yeah, um, yeah, Fred. Thank you very much for this. It's it's very helpful and. Um, sometimes we just listen in and then we don't ask questions. But this time, I think there are some couple of questions. So you helped me. You told me to go look into um, University of Oregon. I, if you remember, I asked about um, any possibility of studying nonprofit management some time back, not long ago. And you told me to look into um, University of Oregon. So now I've applied. They waived my, my application for me. Um, they told me I'm eligible. 
I've done my master's already in project management. Now I have an NGO. I have a registered NGO, and now I want to do my um, a master's in nonprofit management because there's a lot to learn about it. So I wanted to ask with Oregon. I don't know if you have any idea about their English requirements. It seems you must um, 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 you must write it out, even if you are from an English um, a country where English is the um, language of instruction do you have any information about it and how because i am I'm, I'm told that sometimes you can go around it especially if you have um you have studied with mine in my situation having done my master's already that could also help in getting i wanted to know what's the strategy i should use if it comes that which i'm very highly hopeful that they'll give me admission how do i if they don't ask or if they ask how do i convince them into um, weaving this English burden for me. Yeah, it's a great question. I'm I'm glad that uh, you know you listen in and then the you know information I gave about Oregon actually helped and you got like I appreciate that. Um, so what happens is that because you're from Ghana and Ghana is an English speaking country, if you're able to get an English proficiency letter, even if they require, you know, everything has to do with communication. So it even starts with when they write an email to you to request for the English proficiency, the type of English you are going to you are going to respond, you know, to the email will tell them whether you can write email well, um, you are good in English or not. So once <laughs> you 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 are from Ghana, so Ghana is an English speaking country. Our first language is English and all that. Two, um, you have you did all your classes in English, which is from you know high school all the way to a master's degree. So all the classes you've taken have been taught in English. That alone should be, you know, enough to waive it for you. However, you will be able to get an English proficiency letter, and that's what I used when I applied for the Ohio University. And I already have that on standby, by the way. <laughs> Great, I have so, it. Yeah, once you're able to take your time and explain that, and then attach that document, you should be able to get away. But just like I said, most importantly, you know. Um, the way you communicate should be able to tell them whether you are proficient in English or not. In which they will not get it. Okay, all right. Please, my, my, my last question. Right. I, I want you to generally uh, just answer this speaking to everybody that may not even ask questions. What's the ideal student or candidate to get admission in school? Is there, is there anything like that? So that if somebody is sitting back and saying, oh, just as you always say, my GP, is, what do they look out for generally? Because it, sometimes then you find out people's stories and you are like, Charlie, I'm better. I have better grades. I have better background. Everything better than this person, but this person is on a full-time scholarship. I want you to take this time, eh? Just tell everybody that they shouldn't worry and tell them why they shouldn't worry. You Thank see, you. Uh, that's that's a good question. I've never been asked such a question before. So here's the thing that, you know, there's nothing like a perfect application. And I'll give you a typical example that, you know, recently the overall best um, from UCC, um, I was assisting him to apply to a school. Now I used a second class to enter a program where he didn't get admission into. So there is nothing like a perfect application. If I looked at some of the emails I sent way from Bolle Bamboy when I was applying, I, I look at those emails and I feel shy that, you know, because when I got here, I got to know that email is, it's, it's on a, total, a totally different level altogether. So what you have to understand is that it is possible that you are the best of all students, you have a perfect profile, GRE or whatever, and yet, you'll be denied an admission and that shouldn't push you down so that's the reason why you can't put your eggs in one basket and only apply for one school sometimes it could just be the competition you know it could be that you know a lot of people apply to the program you apply to and so the competition or stop another thing could could be that the university has a quota and so when they meet that quota they cannot go above it so the point is that you have to be confident in yourself, whether you have the best of CGP or you have the worst CGP. There is always a school 
and um, there is always an opportunity for everyone. So, if, for example, in the United States alone, if you check, um, every state has a lot of universities to apply to. So, be confident and be able to push through. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Don't limit yourself to only the program that you wish to study. There are lots of other related programs you can target. Don't limit yourself to um, only the university that your friends are going to. There is a lot of other universities you can explore. So um, nobody should should be able to push you down or should be able to, um, um, should be um, discourage, discourage you. Some of your friends wrote GRE and they think that is what got them into their, um, the school they are in. So they are forcing you to write it. I always tell people that tailor your study abroad process according to one, the, um, the resources you have and your time. So when I was in Bali Bamboy, in Bali Bamboy, to even get my national service allowance, I need to take a vehicle all the way from Tenga to Bali, or I have to come to Wenchi. Where am I going to ride GRE? You know, so um, I'm glad you asked this question. I don't know if I was able to give you the best of answers, but obviously, hopefully. You have. You have. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I really appreciate what you do. Yeah, bro, the whole idea is that the sky is big. All of us can fly. Um, I know that there are some people who are against this whole um, explaining and guiding people with this study abroad thing. So that they think everybody should stay back home. But I know there are lots of people here who assist, you know, individuals home more than even the money the government is borrowing. So we will continue to do our best to guide, motivate, and inspire you that the processes that we went through, you can also do it. Um, if some people tell you the amount of um, money they are receiving as stipends, um, you know, recently I was speaking to a brother, he's calling in New York. New York is one of the most expensive places. You could pay rent for like, you know, $1,000, but his stipends alone is about 2000 to 2500 a month. And that's huge. Even some bank managers back home are not receiving that. So um, to, um, there's a, a lot of ways to travel abroad, but the steady route is the easiest and the cheapest that anyone could um, take advantage of. Nkunku, thank you. What's your name? What, why? My, my name is Evans. <laughs> it's just social media banter. So we just want to have some fun on Twitter. That's why right. I, I, my, I'm actually Evans. Uh, but please, by the way, just, just so I know it's, it's not right, but let me keep in this. Right. By the way, please, when you have the chance, please speak about Empower. Because just as you, you told the other guy, I know somebody that used Empower to travel. But when I heard his, his issue, I got a bit moved. And I'm like, so is, it, is Empower even reliable? So please, maybe someday, find time and let's talk about Empower and what we are doing wrong and what we are doing right. Because you can get the funds and still get denied. Why? Those are very important questions to be answer. To answer. Well, once you have a visa interview date scheduled, you know, um, the, the whole process is being done strategically. Once you have a date scheduled, you know, you have every right to get it approved like any other person. So you've been able to produce a financial document, either being a loan or being um, a bank statement from um, your sponsor. What you need to understand is that the confidence and your ability to articulate or respond to questions, is it's, it's just questions and answers. So not everybody studying in the U.S. actually came with a full scholarship. Not everybody who came and um, who is studying in the U.S. got a, even a partial scholarship. So the, the idea that if I have a full scholarship, and of course, I've done this for a very long time, more than half a decade now, I've seen bigger I-20s. I don't know which I-20 from Harvard to Yale to whatever. I've seen every I-20 before. And there are some people, um, there's a lady, she had a full scholarship, no deficit. That is no bank statement submitted. And yes, she got denied on the first attempt, right? So, you know, it's just a matter of finding people who can guide you through the visa process. Sometimes the DS-160 is bulky. And so a lot of people make mistakes. It used to be that initially, if you are traveling abroad, um, it's a secret. You're hiding it and stuff like that. Now it's not a big deal. So get people who have been through the process to at least review your DS-160 for you. The answers that you want to go and t um, t tell at the embassy get people to tell them those answers. It might be, your story might be making sense in your head, but when somebody listening, just like being a comedian, you can crack a joke and it is funny to you, but it may not be funny to the audience, right? So the, um, I have a mock interview platform. And of course, if you have a date scheduled, you can send me a private message on Instagram. I'll be happy to add you. So we meet every 4 a.m. Ghana time 
and then we ask you questions and then we listen to your answers and we correct you on how to go about it. And this platform has actually turned out over thousands of people since I started there, the WhatsApp group, um, you know, since I got here. So get people to help you through the visa process. Just you, you might be good in English, but it doesn't mean you can answer all the questions they ask. So there are just some tricks and then especially with the ds one c application, certain things you are not supposed to put in, certain things you are supposed to add to the ds one c in order to give you a good profile. And I have a connection with Argo Visa. In, in, the, in the next coming weeks, I'll be having a live session with them. Um, they are former visa officers. And so if you can also afford, you can also book a meeting with them. And then as a former visa officer, they will analyze your case. They actually have um, a visa preparation tool which you can use to assess yourself on how prepared you are towards the visa interview and all that. All right, so let's see if we can just um, to respond to more questions before we bring today's session to a close. Remember that every Sunday I'll be live so you can join me and then um, you ask your questions over there as well. Uh, let's talk to, I am Big Boy. Big Boy, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, hello, Mr. Fred. Yeah, please go on. Yeah, please. I I have applied to four schools and to give me an application fee waiver, but I've not heard from them. One school is also sending me messages to evaluate my transcripts. So I don't know the schools that I've not heard from them. Should I message them or I just wait for them? Yeah, you, you, you have every right to do that. So you can definitely email them um, to ask um, when you should expect admission decisions from them. And of course, you can also check the admission deadlines if um, when the deadline is actually um, for the universities you apply to. Once you're able to know that, um, you, you, you would have an idea that it is, it is the best time to and email them to ask for the admission decision. But it is in the right order if you definitely want to email them and ask them um, when you should expect to hear from them. Okay, thank you very much. And please, uh, about, your, about booking an appointment with your team, I think I sent you a DM. So if you can check that. Where is it um, over um, X? Yes, X. Okay, I'll definitely do that. Normally, I respond very quickly on Instagram. So if you could also send me the same message via Instagram, I'll be happy to do that. To respond. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's 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 talk to um, Ousudakwa Presla. Presla, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you too? I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Finally. <laughs> um, yeah, so, Fred, I've been... Um, giving admission to Anna Maria College. Yeah, and um, I was able to secure um, a scholarship of 25, is it 25,000 or 27,000 or so? And I, I think I still need more. Yeah, so I don't know how to go about it. Yeah, congrats on the admission. Um, I think last Last month or so, I was on their campus. It's a beautiful campus. It's um, it's located in Paston, a city closer to Worcester in Massachusetts. Okay. I went there um, and I even took a picture. I don't know if I posted yeah, it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, seen. yeah, it's a beautiful campus. Um, and I hope that by God's grace, you go through. So, yeah, you can reach out to the admissions team. And, of course, you can also check whether um, Anna Maria qualifies for what we call the CSS profile. Is it um an undergraduate or graduate admission? Undergraduate. Yeah. So apparently you submitted your application for free and then you have $27,000 and you still want more. Yes, okay. I still want so, more. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you I need it. I really need it. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely email the admissions office. They and are very welcome. I can contact this financial aid or something like that. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, okay. so the financial aid office can also help. Um, you email them and then as an international applicant, they, they will let you know if they, there is any other applications you need to submit separately so that you'll be considered for the assistance. Okay. The most important thing that I want you to check out is if you get the chance to talk to them, if you can apply for what we call the CSS profile. If there is, yes, then that one. Yes, CSS, yeah. Okay. All right. Gideon, how are you doing? Thank you. 
Hi, Fred. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Um, so my question, it's um, related to the visa interview. So last month, I've, I secured an admission to SIU. Um, I got full scholarship. My deficit was 4000 which was related to insurance. Um, I got a graduate assistantship that will be paying stipends of, I think, 1500 a month. And when I went for the interview, I was asked three questions. First one, where is my wife? And I said she was in the U.S. Because last year, you actually helped my wife secure a scholarship, and she's currently in SIU uh, with another. Uh, um, so she's she's in SIU also. And she said the second question was, what is she doing in the U.S.? She's also on a, she's on a fully funded scholarship in the U.S. And then I was asked if I have her I-20 with me. I didn't take her I-20 along. And I was also asked if I have any proof that we're married. I also did not carry along. Oh, I'm losing you, bro. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, can anybody else hear me? Because I think I'm losing Gideon. Hi, Gideon, can you hear me? Good. Okay. Graham. So I did. And bro, uh, for the visa, you? and I reapplied for the visa, and I've gotten a date for Gideon, we, we lost you at some point. Okay. I think Gideon is having a bit of network issues. Sorry about that. Please, if you can request again. Um, Eben, please go ahead. Thank you, Fred, um, for the opportunity. Um, I listen to this piece. Um, I, I can see I am a bit enlightened on certain things, and then I am very happy you are an alumni of the school that I've had admission to. Ohio University. And then um, one thing is that um, I was being offered uh, the graduate recruitment scholarship. Uh, I know you know much better, better about it since you are an alumni of the school. And then uh, after the scholarship, it's, it's a partial uh, scholarship. And then tuition is a partial, general fee is partial. And then I'll be giving a total stipend of 1,900 for the whole nine months period. Um, I was curious enough, and then I was able to reach out um, to the department chair just today, and then um, he has assured me of um, uh, an assistantship, not not a graduate assistantship, but then he told me I'll be um, I'll handle one other lecturer's um, class for her, and then he he even gave me the name of the course and then the time that it will start, blah blah blah, and, and all this stuff. So my question is, what's your take so far on, on my chances regarding how I should go by my um, I twenty requesting for the I-20 and stuff? What are the ways forward you think can help me? Thank you. Congrats on that mission. Um, what, what program is it? Um, it's an ME in linguistic, um, okay. apply linguistics. Yeah. Apply linguistics. All right, great. So um, at the moment, uh, if you can, I would recommend that you get an, um, a financial statement that would be around um, because of high university around 32,000. So that would be around um, maybe 14 or 16,000 because the, the GRS or graduate recruitment scholarship is around that amount. So you can get a, a financial document, get your I-20 from Susan Spencer and other people and then um, be able to secure an interview date. Then later on, when the scholarship is given, your I-20 will be updated to reflect um, the the new scholarship because and um, even if you get that full scholarship i think ohio university you still need approximately two thousand or thousand or three thousand thereabouts as a bank statement you know so congrats on that mission ohio is a place that you can easily survive bro i'm happy for you and you know i have a um a, a whatsapp group for all the people i've been able to assist over five years now so I can add you to that platform and you can interact with some of the current students um, on campus as well. All right, all right, Fred. Um, um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity so far. And then uh, one thing is that I also log, um, I was navigating through the job website and then I saw this um, library job that pays $11 per, per hour. And then I'm on the verge of submitting my application for that one too. I don't know 
whether it will also be uh, an and I'm the on same coin. If you're able to do that, that's fine. But of course, the assistantship that will be given to you will be bigger than you know getting the library job. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, let's talk to another person. But before that, um, let's check out um, people who are also sending us messages on YouTube and on Facebook. So I'm streaming live on Facebook. We are also live on YouTube. We are live on Instagram. The Instagram handle is The Fred Effect. It's a verified account. So um, mostly that is where I respond very quickly. So you can send me a private message on Instagram at The Fred Effect Instagram handle. I'll be happy to respond to that. Um, there are a lot of other people who are also making insightful content you would want to check out. So you want to check out Kings for the Nina, that's my brother. Um, he makes very good YouTube videos and um, also sharing his journey on how you can go about it. You can also follow um, Peter Bewa. He is on fa uh, Facebook, you know, um, most most of the times. So you can check out Peter Bewa on Facebook as well. Um, I Am Cosmos is also very popular on um, LinkedIn. And I think he's, he's on Facebook as well. You can check him out um, too. Um, there are a lot of other, you know, people who have gone through the same process you want to go through. So it will be important to check out some of these people and follow the um, videos they are making out there. As time goes on, I'll be sharing um, a lot of my brothers and sisters um, who are sharing study abroad content that could also help you. All right. So um, Mr. Comedy said, can I get a um, full scholarship for undergraduate? Yes, you can. Um, Ruda Asante, Fred, please, my ILET um, academic with an overall um, band score of 6.5 and no band less than 6 is expiring this August. I'm sad and I don't know if I can still use it for applications. Yes, of course, you can use it for applications. Um, Isaac Adamako said, please, I have gained admission to University of Illinois, Chicago. Congrats on that, bro. Angela um, Asemenu, watching from Ghana. Great. Um, Nanayao, I see. You said you're also watching from Ghana. Um, Mayumbe, did I get your name right? Watching from Zambia. Nice for tuning in. Bafoche, um, he said um, it was stated in the offer letter that we pay after getting visa. But for um, you're continuing a conversation that I'm not aware of. So um, a craft film lab, you said, Fred, I am applying. You're watching on Twitter. So you said I'm applying for master's in arts studio and all the schools I applied give automatic full scholarship GS stipend, but it's very competitive. Some only admitted, admitting a student. I am in contact with some of the professors directly, but I want to know if it is too much for me to be always updating them and tagging them, even on Instagram as well, as follow each other there. I'm, am I invading too much? No, you're doing um, the best you can. So um, let's go ahead and respond to some some other people as well. So if you're tuning in, thank you for joining. Um, we do this intermittently, but mostly it will be on Sundays. This Sunday, I'll be talking to a brother from Canada um, on how to work on the study abroad process to Canada as well. So be sure to tune in on Sunday at 15.30 GMT. And it's going to be this and every Sunday. I'll be live, and so you, you get opportunity to interact with me. I know not everybody can afford to schedule a private one-on-one -on -one conversation, which is absolutely fine. So I'll be here to respond to your questions. But if you want a private one-on-one -on -one conversation, you can use the seller platform to schedule. And if you send me a private message on Instagram, too, I'll be happy to respond to that. I respond quickly on Instagram. And I do have a mock interview platform that assists with um, the visa preparation. So um, if you have an interview date scheduled, all you need to do is to schedule a private one-on-one. -on -one. I'll be happy to help you. If you check on my Facebook and Twitter, I post, you know, universities that are currently waiving application fees. Most of them have deadlines. So if you follow and then you turn on the post notification, anytime I post, you'll be able to get a first-hand information there as well. All right, let's talk to Bright London. Hi, Bright. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah boss friend. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, um, please, my, my case is um, um, I did a, a telecommunication uh, certificate in City and Girls uh, UK, and I did a diploma in telecommunication in Ghana um, um, University um, 
GTUC and I want to apply, but it looks like I have to go through the top up route, but I want to do an undergraduate. And I wanted to know if there are schools you can recommend, maybe switching from telecom to um, computer science for and with my certificate is it possible to do the undergraduate sort of top up yeah let, let me understand your qualification very well so after high school what was your next qualification bro? Um, i i did uh, the, the high school was a technical school and i i did um city and girls but the certificate is from uk so normally you don't get the english and uh, the math but on my diploma course I have the English and math and everything in it. Uh, I'll so happy, I'll be happy to have a look at your, your document, including the one from the technical school. So if I, I'm, I'm able okay. to get a good look at it, then I'll be able to make suggestions um, on whether we can apply for a bachelor's degree or maybe we should go in for the top one. Yeah, top one. Okay. So please, how so do, can, how do I send it? Yeah. Instagram, or, um, okay. Instagram will be the best to respond to you, bro. I'll do that. All right. Let's talk to Salinko. Salinko, how are you doing? Oh, okay. I'm doing Salinko, great, Mr. Fred. I'm doing great, okay, Mr. Fred. Salinko, please um, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you once again. Um, I think I chanced on your video you did with Nana Yabrefo on your YouTube channel. And your story actually inspired me to also. I think that Hello? it's, it's uh, a fear poker rather, not Nana Yabre. Oh, sorry, sorry, a fear poker. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. All right, that's not <laughs> They actually look alike. <laughs> so your story actually inspired me to actually apply for some of these schools. And I picked 10 schools from the list you gave and actually forgave me admission. And the others is either I haven't finished submitting some of the details they want, but my only problem is with the financial documents. That's the only issue that I'm facing now to get the financial documents to the school because I've, I've been trying as much as I can, but there's no, no one is willing to help. And even sometimes when you approach some of the big people, they're not willing to disclose their financial status even the people you know i'm not willing to do that for you so that's my only problem and it has actually got me stagnant so um which which university did you get admission to congrats on the admission in the first place um i have one from um SNA, snt university okay all right yeah which I, one have, again? I have one from anna maria i have okay. one from denver university okay so um I'm, I'm going to send you a private message right now i'll be able to help you with that um so i'm sending you a private message so i know snt um requires an enrollment deposit have you gotten that done because i haven't uh, gotten my financial i really didn't want to start something that i couldn't finish actually 75 dollars if you're able to the financial statement would you be able to pay the enrollment deposit yes please i will okay so looking at um you know snt because snt for example would give you like fifteen thousand dollars of scholarship how much of scholarship did anna maria give you anna maria was giving me up to 20 i think twenty two thousand and five thousand dollars so 27 27 and okay and yeah, what program snt was giving me um, SNT was SNT giving me 15,000. Yeah, I know. Yes, no worry, exactly. I, know. I may know how it works. So. Yeah, so um, what program did Anna Maria give you? What pro program did SNT give you? They all give me accounting. Um, okay, accounting. So um, let me know which, which school would you opt for because at the end of the day, you can only attend one. Yeah, I'd rather go for um, uh, SNT. Okay, so that means that you would have to pay the enrollment deposit because um, I know Anna Maria would not require an enrollment deposit, right? Uh, Anna Maria requires a deposit too as well, but I think in the range so of two thousand. How much deposit did it require? How much deposit? I think five hundred. 
500. Okay, which means that yeah. the S and T was cheaper. Yes, exactly, rightly so. Let's talk about banks. How much um, financial statement is Anna Maria requiring? Anna Maria was requiring somewhere around, I think, thirty thousand. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, based on the Roman deposit, that's why you're choosing S and T, right? Yes, please. Okay. I do have a platform for all the people I've assisted to S and T. So we we you know just like I said, you can once if you have the enrollment deposit, I'll be able to help you um get the the this um this document to submit and we can take it from there. Um but it's highly possible, you know, um if it was easy, bro, everybody would have done that, right? So right you have to keep um keep pushing through everything will be fine. People are making it through, so can you. All right, let's talk to Derek. Derek, how are you doing? Fred, I'm good, and you? I'm okay, thank you for asking. Where are you talking to me from? Uh, I'm talking from Ghana, yeah. <laughs> yeah, KNUST to be precise. KNUST, you are in yes. school and you want to go to school again? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a final year social work student. But which yes. hall are you? I'm in a hostel, so. Okay, like, which hall are you affiliated to? Uh, uh Kunti. Yeah. Oh, I see. All right, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so um um with my program um social work, I want to know um the kind of programs I'll be able to do at the US, other programs. Yeah, I mean and yeah. scholarship yeah. opportunities. Yeah, a lot. You can look at sociology, you can look at social work, you can look at public administration, you can look at public policy, and there are okay. lots of there are a lot of options when it comes to social work. And, you know, in the U.S., social work is highly sought after, especially if you're able to get a social work certification. There are a lot of jobs okay. available. All right, let's talk to um, Bezel. I'm, I'm not getting your name. I don't know if I got it right. Call me Isaac. Okay, Isaac, go ahead. Thanks for this. Thanks for this. So, so I, I can say something I hear Bezel, but with the youngest I hear. Yes, please. Branding to hear Bezel. I got a University of Michigan, Flint, and my sponsor gave me a bank statement. I wanted to ask, can I upload it myself by creating a different account and then I upload it, or I should contact him to upload it himself? Um, you said that you got admission into Flint. Yeah, yes, please. And then you said, can you do what? I got a bank statement from my sponsor. Mm -hmm. and I was asking if I can upload the bank statement to the um the portal myself or I could contact my sponsor to do it himself. I, I want to remember the application process. I recently did an application for somebody, but I for, um I think the, um Flint allows you to create a portal, right? Yeah. Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flint allows you to create a portal. So I think you can upload it. They give you an opportunity to upload that. Well the thing is they they, they require a third party. You 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 key in your sponsor's details and then yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I remember. So they will yeah. send an email to that um to the email address of your sponsor. Your sponsor will get a notification for him to upload it. That's so right. me, me forging it that way, like me creating an nah, account. Nah, nah, nah. We don't encourage for forging here. And Basically. I was asking, how long should a bank statement take? For like when, going going using it for um, an interview. How long should it be? No, for I it, mean in terms of um you know, the requirements of a bank statement is actually the school that you take it. I, ideally, you should have an updated version of it when you're going for the interview. But okay. it really doesn't matter um, if you're not able to lay hands on it. it, it okay. All your documents, if you're able to get an updated copy when you're going for the interview, that would be the best. But of course, sometimes it's beyond your control and you're not able to do anything about it, which is absolutely fine. Let's talk to Nana Bafo. Nana Bafo, how are you doing? Well, Fred, I'm good. I'm good about you. I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Um, thank you. Uh, well, God bless you for helping out this. Amen. I've got, I've got an admission um, for Clemson um, to read materials science and engineering. But then I applied for TZ school, and they gave me admission saying that I have to start the course as, um, as non thesis and so there's no funding for it. And I want to ask if there's any source of funding for me if um, I want to go ahead and proceed with that. Or I should wait for the other applications I've done. Because I've applied to 
Michigan plant and then also to um, University of Massachusetts at that moment. Okay, so um, you, you obviously, you know, even if you get a funding for Clemson and the other ones come, you are now you have the opportunity to compare. So you can, I want you to handle each of these schools and see if that is your last resort, right? So once you have admission to Clemson, you can you can explore all the avenues that you you have access to to be able to um, find out if you'll be able to get a full scholarship there. If the department is not giving you the scholarship, no problem. Um, reach out to the international office, reach out to the graduate office, reach out to the financial aid office, and you can also check out the Clemson University employment website to see if other departments you know advertise assistance positions there that you can um, make good use of. Oh, very much. You're welcome, sir. Um, let's talk to um, Annie, Ernest. I am Ernest. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, sir. Fred. Good evening once again. Yeah, good evening. How are you doing? I'm, I'm really doing great. I'm really doing great. Um, first of all, I'm grateful to be part of this platform. Yeah, and this is very educative. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, Fred, my question is in two folds. Okay. Um, first of all, um, you see, most of the students, when they are doing the application, they are always saying they are stuck in the, uh, I think, the midway or something like that. And what I really find out is that most of the information on the social media is actually schools without maybe application fee or schools that doesn't take SAT or something else. But later when you apply and you are getting the part to the end, they request for something else. There's a bit of noise. I don't know if it's from Presla or it's from your end. No, my end is cool, Senior uh, Fred. Presla, okay. I, I think it's better now. Go ahead, Ernest. Sorry oh, about okay. that. Yeah. So, yeah, my question is, like, most most of them are stuck because, and me personally, too, when I'm trying to apply for different school, like, um, later on, they ask for maybe the, the, the SAT, but on the website, they said there's, like, there's no SAT in any other females, yes. And secondly, to most of us who like me personally, I applied to S and T last year and I got refused. But I I humbly wanted to know how I can transfer my service to other school and staffs. Yes, please. Uh, so once you get um an I change from a different school, the same portal that you use to generate the service coupon for the I for the service fee to be paid, you go to that website. So far as it's within a year since you paid um, the service fee, you can do what we call the service transfer. So you should have the details of the earlier service fee you paid and the school, and then the new okay. I and the new I twenty, and then you go through the service transfer process. So there is a way you can generate a service coupon. Their website is the fmgc.com. Um, okay. That's, oh man. Okay, and as I think the, the noise was coming from your end, what I'm saying is that you can go through the same process that you use to generate your service coupon to transfer your service from one university to the other. Um, let's talk to um, Ngong Ngonga. How are you doing? Doing great, Mr. Fred. Yeah, where are you talking to? Hey, I'm talking from Cameroon. Cameroon, great. I have a lot of followers from Cameroon. Which city is Cameroon? Hey, presently I'm in Baminda. Okay, so why did you guys go away from the Afcon like that? We were we were supporting you guys. <laughs> you know the egos. The egos never wanted the lions to quit. <laughs> so it was not easy. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I uh, I am a graduate. Like I have an HNG in agricultural engineering, three years program. I did a top up one year in agric business, um, agric business management. So I have a degree in agric business. So I was like asking, is it possible for? First of all, my country is a, like it's a bilingual, bilingual country. Like we speak English and French. Okay. As that, those are the languages we have as our official languages. So I don't know if it is possible for one to like get admission and scholarship in the field of agriculture, the, um, that, that issue of aid, um, English proficiency, that, that stuff, um, 
is it possible it can 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 it be waived because uh most most of the schools you see they they, they stipulate that um it can but um it can be wa- can be waived only for students in ghana nigeria and the other countries that um, english is the official language Okay, so I, I know um, Cameroon has two official languages, which is French and English. So the most important thing is if you are transcript, and for that matter, the university you attended was either done in French, um, the, the medium of um, teaching was in French or was in English. So would you be able to it, confirm that for me? It was in English, in English. Yeah, good. So which means that even your transcript does not need a translation, right? Yes. Yeah, so once you have an English um, proficiency letter and also um, you're able to explain your transcript is in English, then you may not need that. Now, remember that sometimes the requirements of the university's website, you know, you can definitely ask uh, questions about it and all that. So you have to explain to them that even though you're from Cameroon, but you're from the English part of Cameroon, you did your or your undergraduate, maybe high school and all of that in English. You also have an English proficiency letter to, to prove that you are proficient in English. So if, you, if you're able to send that, mostly it will be waived for you. Okay. All right. Then, uh, yeah, then can you also like um, give me some clues, the, the types of universities that can apply in the field of agriculture? Yes, yeah, sure. I can, I can definitely give you a list. Um, if you have a pen and a paper, I can tell you a lot of them. So you can actually check out um, these universities, you can check out um, Eastern Kentucky University. It's in the state of Kentucky. You can check out University of Georgia. You can also check out Louisiana State University. Um, NMS, you are, I did a video about it, New Mexico State University. New Mexico is actually a state in the US. Some people think it's Mexico. No, it's not. It's New Mexico State University. Um, I went there the other time, Mi- Michigan State University, um, University of Illinois. Um, Urbana, you, you can check out Mississippi State, Virginia Tech. Normally, I post like some programs and the universities you should check out. Maybe you should be checking out my um, um, my Twitter feed and then you can see most of them. I appreciate you for joining from Cameroon. Um, let's talk to Richmond. Richmond, how are you doing? Hello, sir. Hey, how yeah, are you I'm doing? doing good. How are you too? I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Please go okay. ahead. Okay, please. Um, I want to ask. Um, I applied for Ohio Dominican University, and um, they're asking for um updated essay. So how do I go? How do I go about about it? Essay may be like a topic they want you to write about. Ohio Dominican is in Ohio. I know about that school. Okay. So um, you have to just know the topic of the essay. You write it, and then. You can upload it as part of your um, document. So, so let's talk to Elvis. Elvis Terrier. Yeah. Elvis, how are you doing? Hello, Hello Fred. Yeah, please uh, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I am. I have gotten an admission to two universities in New York. Uh, one gave me a scholarship of twenty thousand dollars. Elvis, are you using Yes. Yeah, that, that is making it difficult to hear you. So I don't know if you can take it off and that will be helpful. Uh, All right, let's go to Nathaniel. Um, Nathaniel, how are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How about you, sir? Yeah, this is clear. Go ahead. Okay, please. I have a diploma in uh, basic education and I want to ask if I uh, can be considered for master master's program. And is there a must to have uh, my transcript evaluated to be um a u.s equivalent no it's not a must but it is a helpful and advisable so i i would hi, i request um recommend bowling green state university it's located in ohio bowling green state university you can actually okay. apply without um the transcript evaluation but uh, to be honest with you if somebody who is having a four-year bachelor's degree applies or even somebody with um a master's degree and applying for a second master's, the person will have an upper hand over you. So um, it's okay if you cannot uh, afford to evaluate your transcript. You can. There are a lot of schools you can apply to. Um, the, there is a university called University of Findlay. It's also located in Ohio. You can also check that one out. But if you are able to afford to evaluate your transcript, 
that would put you um, your application on on a good pedestal. Lamin, how are you doing? Good, good evening, Fred. I'm fine. Yeah, how are you? Doing? Yeah, which country are you talking to me from? I'm I'm calling from Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. Okay, great. Go ahead. And first of all, I would like to thank you for having us in this platform. I I got an admission at the University of at the Michigan Technological University. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm Hello? I yes, I got an admission in I was I was I was applying for I was going for spring semester. I got refused at the embassy. So I asked them to defer my course for fall 2024. Now I've gotten admission for fall 2024. I use an Empower loan to apply for the visa, but I got refused. And now I've gotten a sponsor. I would like to know whether I should use the, the, the sponsor I've gotten or I should continue with the Empower loan. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 it's good if you are changing something about your previous profile. So um, if you have a sponsor and then your story, you're able to uh, craft your story very well. Also get people to review your DS1. So obviously if you have a date scheduled, you can join my mock interview platform as well. So try and change something, especially with a question of what has changed. There should be something, you know, changing about your new application, not going in with the same profile you did um, previously. So yeah, I think that would be positive. Let's talk to um, Francis. Francis, how are you doing? Hi, Francis, can you hear me? Uh, okay, I think Francis cannot hear me. So um, I appreciate everybody for joining. Um, my name is Frederick. Um, this has been a very insightful one. I appreciate all the diverse questions you're asking, a lot of people joining from different countries and all that. Um, so my name is Frederick. I make videos on studying abroad and scholarship opportunities. I share my ideas and information. Um, on how you can also go about the process. If you check out our YouTube channel, it's called the Fred Effect or TFE, and um, please subscribe. Um, we are currently over 130,000. It's the biggest study ever content creation channel. If you check on Twitter or X, it's also the same. Fred Effect is verified account. Instagram is the best way to reach out to me. It's also the Fred Effect and you can send me a private message. You can also check out our TikTok handle. It's the same thing, it's over 100,000 followers, so the Fred Effect. And um, finally, you know, LinkedIn as well, the same thing as the Fred Effect. Instagram um, is the Fred Effect, Twitter, Facebook, and also YouTube. I appreciate you for joining. This was an impromptu space, but um, thank you for making it happening. You can reach out to me privately if you schedule a private one-on-one -on -one conversation with Seller dot um co forward slash 4giw there is a mentorship program if you want to um, need help to apply for a phd or a master's degree but if you have an an hnd or high school qualification even with a d7 or e8 it's still feasible and possible to study abroad thank you for joining in i'll come your way some other time and god bless you i will see you in another one